before we get to what we came for in this documentary, because a lot of people have been excited, a lot of people have been um, invested. Yes. A lot of people have suggested um, all. We've gotten all the suggestions. Uh, this this uh, podcast today, um, we are going to break down each of our ten sickest fuck documentaries of all time, part yep. one. Because this is definitely going to go into a part two. Yeah, oh, for sure. We we have not discussed our list with each other. We discussed not discussing them. Yep. We we I don't know what Dean's list is. He doesn't know what my list is. I want to give a shout out to Paul Wall. I want to give a shout out to all the people that have su- sent me suggestions. Did you get any suggestions from? I d- I got some, and they were very they were very <laughs> helpful. Um, and I've I've really taken a lot of time, even while I was sick, to curate this list and really give the people an accurate list. I don't want to just come up with the latest. The latest docs that have come out in the six, past six months, I've really thought about over the years. I've done my research, so I'm very excited to see your list. Okay, I, I've done the same thing. I've rewatched a couple of these documentaries. I've rewatched parts of a couple of these documentaries. I haven't been able to do all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we love all things sick fucks. We love all things murder doc and chill. Of course, that was the um, the infamous um, log line that I came up with. I No, uh, no, 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 what? no. What? I came up with that in 2017. I came up with Murder, Doc, and Chill. No, you fucking <clears throat> didn't. I came up with Murder, Doc, and Chill, and I can't believe you're taking credit for Murder, Doc, and Chill. I came up with that. It's in writing, 2017. I came up with that, and then that spread like wildfire, and it seemed like the rest of the fucking world caught on to that Murder, Doc, and Chill. There's T-shirts about it. You made a T-shirt on it, and I saw zero dollars from the, the proceeds. Well, you know why? You know why you saw zero dollars? Because like I've said many times before, People aren't you know, buying. People are now. People are now saying, "Oh, Mike Rapp, you need to do a disruptive um, a fitness T-shirt." Because <laughs> Mister New York out in France, he came up with a great design for that. And about three people said, "Do a T-shirt." We do the T-shirts, and you know, I mean, the, the fake Kurt Cobain T-shirt did okay, um, but not as well as I would have liked it to do. Not as well as it, 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 the amount of work that it takes to get the T-shirt design. I get get the T-shirt sent out. I'm like, listen, I would love to have a T-shirt business. Uh, we come up with butter, so- butter soft T-shirts. Uh, the, the designs are curated. And then people don't buy them. Like a few people do. But I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it. I, just shit. Do- I, thought, I thought that was just going to be like a, a smash hit when we, we put those back out. Exactly. But if people don't want to do it, you know, we, we came up with Murder Doc and Chill t-shirts. Yep. I mean, we've had great t-shirts, great designs. Yeah, and maybe people are, you know, yeah. and, and also the t-shirts themselves are butter soft. Well, we know that, you know, you know, it's not the quality, but maybe people are waiting for that disruption fitness line. Maybe they're looking for that. Fitness. Maybe people look, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe people want those grandfather socks. The calf huggers might be like the best, the best, uh, Article of clothing that you could put out there potentially. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Okay. Nonetheless, we're getting to it. The yes. ten sickest fuck documentaries. <clears throat> the list from both of us. If we have the same documentary, we will say it and it'll be scratched off the list. This is not a competition. This is not this is just for for our we love documentaries. We love yeah. sick fuck documentaries. This is just to share it with you guys. Um, should we do it in no particular order? You can't uh, put them in any order, he, right? I think that you could definitely put like a, a like a, there should be like a top a, a top five or a top yeah. I think there should be a top five in order. The rest maybe don't have to be in order. The other five, but I think that like or a top three. You should know what your your number one is. You should know what number two and maybe number three are. Okay. But I, I, that's how I feel about it. I, I could do it. You don't have to, but I, that's my list. I've, I have it ready to go. All right. Well, then let's do let's do um, the, like the top three. But no. But shouldn't we start at the bottom? Shouldn't we just let's start getting the yeah, ones? Yeah, we'll start at the bottom, but then, then we'll do the final three. Okay. E- okay. That sounds good. All right. I'm gonna go. You want to go? F- you go first. Um. Okay. I'll. You know what? I'll put. I'll put. I think I'm going to go with, I mean, yeah, number 10 or whatever it is. I would say, I would I would go with Mommy, Dead, and Dearest. Wow, that's with, number 10. I mean, I wouldn't say it's in order. I mean, I, holy shit. We just said, you just said. 
You just said you you just, but mommy dead and dearest is in is not in your top three. No, it's not. It's it's not in my I, it's not in my top five. Shit. It's not in my top five. And that's the Gypsy Rose. That's the um. That's I have the, to uh, say, I have to take that off my list because that was in my top three. But go ahead, break wow. down the the break down the the Gypsy Rose documentary. Mommy Dead and Dearest was excellent film. It, it was holy an ex- shit! What a great film. It was a documentary that ended up being really popular after the documentary because. They turned it into a Hulu, you know, miniseries or whatever it was, a series called The Act with Joey King and Patricia Arquette. But it's basically a documentary in 2017 with this woman named Dee Dee Blanchard who was murdered oh. by her own daughter, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and Gypsy Rose's boyfriend, Nicholas Godijon, um, <laughs> and who were accused of doing it. And um, it's a fucking wild ride. She... She, the, the daughter, Gypsy Rose, was, like, handicapped and, and sick and made to believe that she was sick, but her mother was making her sick. And what is that called? Munchausen by proxy, I think it's called. Some wild where shit. Where the mom gets off on, you know, having her daughter um, be really sick. And the daughter kind and of— And they were cheating the system. And, and, yeah. and, I mean, the mother was, like, you know, they were at Disneyland, and they were all doing, like, you know, Make-A-Wish and all this all kind that. of shit. She wasn't at school. She was—it was— it's just a brutal, 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 sick it, fuck documentary, and I'm, I'm impressed and surprised. Yes, I have to take that one off my list because okay. I had that at top three. Okay, uh, I, all right. Can I? Do you want to go with another one for you, or? Yeah, I'm gonna go with another one. All right. So my first documentary in in my top ten is the I believe it was six part. ESPN 30 for 30, Made in America, the O.J. Simpson story. That's a great one. O.J. Simpson is one of the sickest fucks ever. This is (laughs) one of the greatest documentaries ever. And uh, it just articulates his whole life. It articulates the murders. It articulates who he was before he was O.J., how he became O.J., what it was like being famous O.J., and then it was what it was like turning into the sick, Fuck OJ, and it's so detailed. It's such a well done documentary about one of the sickest fucks who continues. He's it's crazy. He's on Twitter like, "Hey guys, it's me, the Juice." Like as if nothing happened, as if you didn't fucking murder two people outside your outside their homes in Brentwood. I mean, he's crazy. And if he I did it, bu- this is how I would do it. And he even did you see that video where he's going re 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 with the knife to the woman? He's crazy. Yo, O.J. Simpson is buck wild. For real. O.J. Simpson is buck wild, and that Made in America documentary is incredible and yeah. had me and had everybody on the edge of our seats when it came out, and what an achievement for a filmmaker about one of the sickest fucks of all time. So that I had as my first in my top ten, the Made in America documentary uh, about the sick fuck O.J. Simpson. That's not your first. You're, you're saying that's like the last, right? That's yeah, that's not. Your no, that's the number ten. I'm the, no. the only. Th- I think everybody's clear on the rules. We're breaking I just down was the top three. Clarifying the I rules. I think everybody's clear on the rules. I just was. I guess I wasn't clear on the rules. You, you weren't. Everybody else happened to be. Everybody else is Gucci. Okay, that's fine. All right. Well, I think that's a great one. That's not in my list. I definitely thought about it. Didn't make the list. Didn't make the cut. But that's what makes. This so special is that we don't know. We have no idea who's got nope, what. We don't know, and uh, it's exciting. So it's, I'm gonna, it's it's very exciting. It, it, it is. I've been really like I've really been looking forward to this podcast. I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've really been putting in the research here. So I'm gonna go with with number nine. And this is something that you probably wouldn't even know. You wouldn't think that I would put this on my list. And I don't think I think a lot of people have not seen this documentary. But for some reason, it really captivated me, blew me away, perfectly executed. I'm going to say <laughs> I Sniper. I Sniper was a Vice doc. I think it was on Vice, but it's, oh, about, yes. it, it, it's about the DC Sniper attacks of 2002. <laughs> and I remember being 12 years old when that happened. And, and the DC Sniper attacks were the... That the gentleman and that young boy, Lee Malvo, who was like 14 years old or 16 years old, went on a spree and the world was in a panic. They couldn't find these guys. And this is a documentary docu-series that's told by Lee Malvo, the kid 
who went on that joyride and was pulling the trigger with that guy and how he was manipulated by that older gentleman. I forget his name, but that is a very, very well done documentary. It's a sick fuck documentary because the both uh-huh. of them were sick fucks. And that was a very scary time in America. I totally remember it, it was soon after nine 11 and, and, uh, the world was in a panic. They couldn't find these fucking people for like, a month or whatever and they kept killing people every day but that is a very 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 well done documentary it's called i sniper what i highly recommend watching that great choice great choice great pick uh uh, uh, uh i'm gonna go with the my next documentary i loved this documentary um again every one of these documentaries <clears throat> focuses on at least one sick fuck. Mm-hmm. And this particular documentary that took place um, in the 80s, in the 1980s, in New York City, in uh, Brooklyn, focused on a few sick fucks. And uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it, 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 the, the star of it is a sick fuck who is a corrupt sick fuck. And the documentary is called The 7-5 about the most right. corrupt police department in New York City in Brooklyn, New York, during the 80s, uh, uh, and the cop, Michael Dowd, who, uh, uh, you know, he's in the documentary, extremely charismatic, extremely articulate, and it breaks down his corruption, it breaks down, um, you know, the drugs, the drug dealers, they're in it, there's this one, like, you know, um, um, I think he's Colombian or Dominican kingpin, he's in it, these people are talking like they're, like, fucking... They're, they're, they're sommeliers or something like that. Like they're chefs. Like they're just mm-hmm. chatting and telling stories. And I did this and we gave this one a beating. And then, you know, this is where we set this person on fire. And, oh, we were going to kill this cocksucker and all this stuff. Excellent documentary, The 7-5. Uh, uh, and, and that's my uh, my second pick uh, for my sick fuck of the week. Uh, sick fuck documentaries. That's a, that's a really good one. Not on my list, which is also, it's great. I love that. That's That's a solid one. I remember that documentary and that's, Man, people should definitely watch that. That's that's a crazy one. I I'm gonna have to go with one that I don't think I don't think a lot of people know this one. It's one that I've seen maybe eight years ago. It came out in 2013. It's on HBO. It is so fucking disturbing. <laughs> it's called <laughs> The Cheshire Murders. It has been in my head for so long. I, ever since I saw it, it has been burned into my brain. It's called The Cheshire Murders about a home invasion in Cheshire, Connecticut, which happened in 2007. Oh. And it was these two pieces of shit. I, I saw this. You, yeah, they invaded a residence of this family in Cheshire, Connecticut. With, yeah, this is terrible. It, it's terrible. And, and, and this family and their daughters, and they, you know, it was like they said they were going to let them go. They ended up torturing all of them, raping the daughters, and they, tr- and they set the house on fire to burn all of the evidence it's it's i mean i could tell you i mean the, it is disgusting it is so fucked up what they did to this family and it is such a disturbing documentary but it is absolutely up there of sick fuck documentaries to watch if you can stomach it it's on hbo it's called the cheshire murders it's very hard to watch but it it is absolutely hey, we, insane. we didn't say that this was a you know feel good movie no we, it's not we, it's... we said this is about sick fucks uh, true crime and truly, truly deranged lunatics. Uh, 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 and, yeah. we'll, maybe we'll do another one about you know feel good movies, right? Uh, right. Greatest feel good movies of all time because I think people are gonna have they're gonna throw up after listening uh, well, to this that, podcast. But also you're getting because you're you're deep diving and I respect the list. You, I respect I'm the deep, list. I'm deep diving and and you know what you're here for. You know what the you know what we're going down. Like this is this is the list. It's it's the sick fuck documentaries, true crime of all time. This is like. All the time sickest for me. fuck of all time, uh, part one. Right, uh, part one. So that that's on my list, and that's a very disturbing doc on HBO. Check it out, The Cheshire Murders. What's on? What's um, number eight for you? The next one for me is um, again. This is a little bit more pop culture. You're deep diving, but it was just as disturbing, just as frustrating. Because you know, one of the things I realize when you watch these documentaries, how frustrating they are. Oh my god! You yeah. know, because the the people are so sick. They're so deranged you get frustrated watching them you get frustrated uh how people could get caught up and caught um you know involved in these situations not victims uh just people that sort of but you understand because most of these sick fucks they're they're maniacal and they're Mm -hmm. great con men 
And this is one of the greatest common, one of the most sickest, heinous fucks uh, of, 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 of the modern day. And I have to go with, uh, uh, at number eight, I have to go with Surviving R. Kelly. The okay. documentary that totally exposed R. Kelly for being this sick pile of shit that he truly is. Just years and years and years of manipulation and uh, uh, um, just taking advantage of young girls. And, 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 and it's just one victim after another victim after another victim. And, and these women that came forward and they told their stories were very brave. And R. Kelly, you ain't never getting out of a jail. You ain't never doing another concert. You ain't never sing bump. You ain't never singing bump right. and grind. I believe I could fly. That the only thing you're gonna be doing is is when people in jail be like, "Yo, Duke, sing that song for me, homie." <laughs> yeah, that's I yo, mean, my, good. My, my girl, my yo, yo, my girl's on the phone. Yo, sing for my girl, Robert. That's what. That's right. the only time you're gonna be singing for a captivated audience, R. Clay, because you are a true, true sick fuck. Huh. And you're a pedophile, motherfucker. You're yes. a pedophile. You're a pedo, is what you are. Yes, and, sir. Uh, yes, and I sir. like that. I like that he's not getting out. That's tight. And uh, I, that's another good one. Not on my list, but I, this is this is really good. I like that we're not <laughs> having the same ones. Um, yeah, me too. I like this. So we're, we're, we're hopefully we're coming up with like 18, 19 fantastic we're fucking documentaries. Moving and grooving right along over here. I, I have to say, okay, so now we're now we're getting into it a little bit. Number seven for me. And this this could easily be up there, but it's it's number seven for me. Came out in 2020. Netflix doc. Everybody knows the story. It's called American Murder, The Family Next Door on Chris Watts, the guy in Colorado who killed his wife and two young girls and put them in those gas, whatever the fuck those were, those ta- those oil tanks. Right. Um, you know, you've seen all the, there's nothing new in it, but you see all the archival footage, the body cams of the, you know, and he played it like, you know. It was like on that Gone Girl shit. Like he played it like, oh, I don't know what happened to my wife. I don't know what happened to my daughters. And you yes. could tell he was an absolute sociopath. And and the whole reason was because he wanted to, he was having a relationship with another girl and wanted to just like annihilate his whole family. But what he did to his two daughters and his wife, it was so fucking disgusting and so goddamn disturbing. And Netflix made a really good documentary on it, American Murder. The family next door on Chris Watts, that sick fuck who will never, ever get out of prison. And um, he deserves another great, everything. That's, another great pick. Another that's, great that's, pick. A, that's a really good one, too. So Strong list, my friend. Yeah, that's, 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 that's one. So um, that's my number seven. And now to, to your number six. We're getting it. We're almost down to the top five here. Okay. Uh, my number six, I'm going to have to go. I rewatched this. Okay. <clears throat> In. Just the guy who turned out, again, this is another pedophile. Mm -hmm. And we don't make fun. We don't make light of that at all. No. At all. These are pieces, piles of shit. R. Kelly, this guy I'm about to talk about right now. Great documentary. Well done documentary. And it was because of the family documented so much stuff. And then later on during uh, the making of the documentary, they... they, uh, um, used all this audio footage and home recordings that they did. It took place in Great Neck, Great Neck, New York, right out there in Long Island, Strong Island, uh, uh, right out there, uh, you know, where so many great people are from Long Island. Uh, but this family, a Jewish family from uh, Great Neck, New York, uh, uh, some of the sickest fucks ever. Uh, we're talking about Capturing the Freedmen. Yes, I knew you were going to say that. Directed by Andrew Jarecki. Excellent film. Um, you, I mean, the father... Uh, this is a family. It was it's it's a, it's a married couple, um, and the father gets accused of being a pedophile, and then they accuse one of his sons, and it's three sons, and you would never think these are like the most sort of stereotypical nebbishy Jewish mm-hmm. kids with their Jewish father and 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 their whiny mom, and it just twists and turns, and there's so much archival footage, and this is an iconic documentary capturing the Freemans. Um, and you never quite know who did what, who didn't do what. It is not easy to watch, like any of these films. None of these films are None easy to watch. Um, they're, they're, all, they're all hard to stomach. Uh, but if you have not seen the Capturing the Freemans, one of the great uh, murder docs, one of the great, uh, not murder docs, true crime docs ever made just because of the storytelling and the characters. They are just characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the, the father um, gets accused of pedophilia. 
of, of raping uh, kids. He's a school teacher. And then they accuse his, uh, his oldest son of doing the same thing. And then there's accusations of the father uh, molesting his kids. And it's just one twist after sick twist. And it's a great film, like I said, that's on HBO that I just rewatched. And my wife came in while I was watching. She said, what the fuck are you watching right. this for? And I was like, because I'm preparing for the, right. for the, you know, you have to prep. You have to prep. Otherwise we can't give you, I mean, this is a, you know, it's a curated list here. You got to do your research and that's It's crazy. a curated you, list. This yes. is a curated list. Of, we take of, this of, very so seriously. We took it. Yeah. And because you had COVID and a bad ankle, like you better take it seriously. Hundred percent. I, you know, we came prepared here, but that's a great one. I knew that was going to potentially be on your list. I was really considering putting it on my list, but there's a lot of sick fucks out there, and not everybody oh. can make the list. Oh, so, there's a lot of sick fucks there's... out there, and you're right. Not everybody can make that list. That's why this is going to be part one. Right. That's no. That's a great one though. And that and shout out to that director. I have a feeling Andrew Jarecki. I have a feeling his name's going to come up <laughs> very soon in this podcast on our list because he's that's not the only documentary that he's done on a sick fuck oh so, no he's excellent anyway that's are we are we on a top five now for me i don't um, know um i not, i think you're at number six fuck am i all right well i'm gonna put this is because well, go ahead you know i don't know i don't know where i'm at but uh, but just I, do you just do the next one okay so the next one i'm gonna have to go with and this I really wanted to put this higher, but not everybody could get to that top three, top four. But the next one, it is so fucking well done. It's one of the most well done documentary series I've seen. It came out not too long ago, maybe a year ago. Gotta have to go with The Night Stalker on Netflix. The hunt for the ser- the hunt for a serial killer. The Night Stalker, sick fuck American serial killer Richard Ramirez who was dubbed the Night Stalker in the Valley in Los Angeles. I think it was, yeah, it was in, in, in California, whose crime spree took place between 1984 and 1985. Um, he, was, he was sentenced to death in 1989, and uh, he, he is a true sick fuck. He, 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 I mean, he looked, I mean, he was, kind of looked like a model in a way, and what was crazy was this guy was He's a Benicio the- Del Toro looking motherfucker. Definitely. And, and he, he kind of looked like a model. He charmed people with his charisma. He even got on the dating game, the dating game back in the, in the 80s when that was a show. And he won. He won the dating game. He was going to go, um, huh. you know, he was like a suitor on the dating game. And, and, uh, but yeah, he's like one of the most notorious um, serial killers out there in, from, Cal- you know, in California and all that shit. But that was such a well done documentary. And that was very scary to watch. I remember during the pandemic yep. watching that and being frightened. Like I, I'd be yep. like, I don't think I can watch this before I go to bed. I'm yep. scared. And I was like making sure my doors were locked. Like that's the effect that that, yep. that dude had and that documentary had. And, and uh, that could have been higher because it was so well done, but the night stalker is fucked. Uh, I, I have to say, I totally agree. And I have to say you, you beat me to the punch. Cause that was in, I, I had that as my number two, Damn, number two. Sick fuck documentaries of all time because of the execution. Yep. Because of the Night Stalker himself. And because while I was watching it, it made me lock my doors. That's what I'm that saying. Was, it was a horribly disturbing documentary to watch, the, the Night Stalker documentary on Netflix <sighs> about one of the sickest of all sick fucks, 100%. Uh, Richard Ramirez. Um, and shout out to the great Benicio Del Toro. Sorry uh, that you, you look like Richard Ramirez <laughs> yeah. uh, or Richard Ramirez looks like you. I didn't mean to drag you into this, yeah. um, but definitely, uh, you, you know, one of the, one of the great, uh, murder docs and just really well done. And the cops that were in it were really good. And, uh, uh it's just a very, 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 uh, hard to watch documentary. And, and those guys are still frustrated by that case to this day. It sort of still haunts the, the police that were trying to capture, uh, uh, Richard Ramirez, great pick. I had it at number two in my list. Uh, it, and, it could and, be a number two e- easily. I'm not surprised that it's number two for you. It's so fucking well done, and it's frightening. And he is a true blue sick fuck. That guy is a real piece of shit. Uh, a real, real piece of shit. Um, all right, so my next one, um, I'm going with another classic, um, and, and this is a uh, one that it was so good. Uh, I think when this came out, it was like, I don't know how many fucking, I don't know how many parts it was. I think it came out in 
2004. Oh, I know. This is mine. This was going to be mine, bro. I remember watching this when we were doing the War at Home, oh, actually. Yep, um, I remember. It was like, you know, eight parts or ten parts. And it was one of, these, it was one of the first documentaries that just, you know, had multiple parts. Um, we're going with the staircase yep. about that sick fuck Michael Peterson. Yep. Um, and 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 the killing, the killing of his wife Kathleen. And this thing, what's that? Killing of his wife Kathleen, throwing her down yep. the staircase. Throwing her down the staircase, and you never quite know what the hell is going on here. And this is just one of these stories. You're like, this is just handmade. To be turned into a documentary and handmade to be turned into an actual series, which I didn't watch. Uh, apparently, there's a series on HBO about it. Uh, but The Staircase, one of the most iconic and one of the first, uh, like I said, uh, yeah. multiple part sick fuck documentaries. So well done. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to give spoilers here. But if you've never seen The Staircase and you want something to deep dive into, you should absolutely watch The Staircase. Because even at the end... You're kind of like you don't know. You don't know what to think, but it, talk about commitment and talk about how. I mean, how long they put work into this? Like you said, I remember you mentioning this in two thousand four, five when it came out originally, and then they picked it up again in twenty thirteen and twenty fourteen. Like they they never stopped filming. And this sick fuck Michael Peterson, they mm. had they had all. They were filming him in his home awaiting trial with an ankle monitor on him and, and talking to his lawyers. And you really see the preparation of the defense attorneys and how they're going to get him out of this. And it's just – it's there. You're there with him. He is, he is in every frame. He's you know saying how he's innocent, but, all, but for some reason – Two of his other wives were also thrown down the staircase. I don't know how that happens. What, talk about a coincidence. But the staircase is – I will – I will say it is the godfather of all true I crime agree. documentaries. It is the the godfather if you are going to watch anything. Huh. It, I mean, so much came from the staircase after that. I don't think yeah. without the staircase, I don't, you know, I mean, that is the blueprint for sick fuck documentaries and, and true crime wow. series. W really, really way to articulate that. Thank you, it man. Is, it uh, is one it of the is. blueprints of, I, you're, I think you're right. It, it is. is really, 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 really well done, and I, so, I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, that's, did you have that on your list, or that's, no? It was the. It was literally what I was going to say next, as a, as a number five, I think, because it's it. It really is one of the greatest, and that's what I have to say. That's what got me to start watching true crime documentaries. This the staircase was it. That was the first of it, and that's what uh, spawned it for me to just continue into uh, into that fucking passion of my true crime sick fucks. But that's a great one. We both share that on the exact same number. I would say number mm. five. So now I think we're down to the, the, the top four, if anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, you go and then I'll go. Okay. I, I'm going to say this one, not a lot of people know about it yet. It's number four for me. It's something like the Cheshire murders that really has been burned into my brain. If you've seen it, you will never forget it for as long as you live. It's one mm. of the. It's really one of those documentaries. For as long as you live, you'll never forget this documentary. It's a mm. one-off. It's not a. It's not a docu series. It's on HBO. It is so fucking disturbing, and it's mm. called "There's Something Wrong with Aunt Diane." I don't this even is, know if I've heard of the, if there's something wrong with Aunt Diane. That so, sounds disturbing. There's something wrong with Aunt Diane. Is is about a 2009 state parkway crash. There's not much to it, but there's this woman who she's, she's an aunt and she's like taking a bunch of kids to like, Oh, she's taking a bunch of kids to I saw the this. water or the river or whatever it is. And they're on this little field trip, but they have this surveillance where she starts acting very strange and she stops at a gas station and you can tell something is going on with her and they don't they it's it's kind of an unsolved mystery though they don't really know what it was they think that she was drunk or an alcoholic or something but she was on on uh, security cam footage at the gas station and she didn't know what the fuck was like something was up with her something was wrong with her and she got back in this car and went miles on the opposite end of the freeway driving with these kids in the car and mm -hmm. killed the entire 
killed this entire family. And they Terrible. show they show the graphic photos after the car crash of her. It's it, it's burned into my head. But it is a very compelling documentary, and it's very very disturbing because you don't really know what happened. The family's kind of in denial. But um, mm-hmm. if you're looking for something really disturbing and and also captivating, and you know, there's something wrong with Aunt Diane is and is really fucked. So that great, I, great pick. I, I have great to put pick. that up there as a, as a number four. And I want to hear your number four. All right. Well, um, I have to go with this is another classic. Everybody knows uh, the, the the name. Great title. Um, came out at a great time, came back with part two, just kept going, going, going. There's been rap songs it's been featured in, uh, <laughs> a reference in uh, because of the title. You, you, I mean, th- th- this is just white trash, sick fuck uh, uh, city. Uh, I'm going with the, the Netflix classic. Again, uh, these are all classics. This is a docuseries making of a murderer. Oh, of course. A murderer, of course, about... Stephen Avery and the killing in Wisconsin and it's attempted murder and it's sexual assault. And, uh, you know, he, he was in jail and then his nephew, Brendan Dassey, and these are all captivating, captivating, just regular people, regular people. But sometimes you put these regular people in front of a camera, you get a murder, mm-hmm. uh, uh, some burnt evidence, and you have, you have lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. You have lightning in a bottle with these people, and everybody has seen it. If you haven't seen Making a Murderer, watch it. I think it's eight parts, maybe it's ten parts. It goes on and on. You st- and to this day, you're st- another one of these where you're like, you just don't quite know. Yeah, you don't. But that that took the whole world by storm when that came out. That was a- another talk about a godfather of documentaries. I mean, that had everybody. That had that had people who weren't even into true crime fucking sit down and tune in and watch that documentary because of how captivating that was. But that's an excellent pick. It's not on my list. It should be. Wow. I know. I, I, it's not on my list. I, it should be because it's... Your list it, is strong, though, my friend. Your list is different. very I'm, strong, I'm trying amigo. to think out of the box a little bit, but making a mur- making of a murderer is... I mean, that that should be on everybody's list. That's, that's, a, that's an absolute classic. So that's a good one. And, and I feel like now we're at the top... Three. But... but 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 you had Night Stalker. I mean, you picked Night Stalker, and Gypsy Rose was in my top. Yeah. Okay. We've so we we've had three because uh, no, we've had two of the same. We've had um, Mommy Dead and Dearest. We had Mommy Dead and Dearest. We had Night, Night Stalker. Stalker. We had um, the Staircase. Did, we had the Staircase, right? But that was give. I, I mean, obviously, we were going to have the Staircase. I mean, that's that's yes. going to be on both of our lists. But I think this is the top two. And no, I think. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Uh, top, top, top. Well, I'm gonna do my. Have... I'm gonna do my th- my third, and then it's top t- two for you, and then it's top two for me. Okay, go ahead. My third, and I mean, God, I would love to put this as a number one, but it's just not sick enough. But <laughs> another God, and this is the last time I'll say it, but this is the Godfather that changed true crime documentaries, and one of the most jaw dropping might be wow. one of the most jaw dropping. Um scenes to watch live because I remember watching this live and my jaw I we're going fucking here, my dropped. Yeah, this is I great. mean, you were in absolute shock and silence, but one of the best true... Man, I have to say, I think it is the best true... I will go on the record and say, this is the best true crime doc. If you are going to dive into anything, if you want a yeah. true crime series, The Jinx. Yep. Um... Who that's directed by Andrew Jarecki, who did the capturing the Freedmen's doc that so, you mentioned. So Andrew Jarecki is kind of like the Francis Ford Coppola or the Martin Scorsese of true doc sick fucks. Hands because down. I don't know if anybody's come back to back with two. No. And I got and you, to meet him. And I got to I got to sing him his praises in person. He's kind of like the Quentin Tarantino, the Scorsese of sick fuck documentaries. He's and he didn't back to back. He didn't even need to do back to back. He could have just done the Jinx and been the Scorsese of true crime docs because the Jinx is an absolute masterpiece of a true crime <sighs> docu series. It, it is, and it it follows and and it, and it really epitomizes documentary filmmaking because, like you said, you get information in real time. The same time that the actual filmmakers are getting information exactly. about the crime. 
Exactly. And you know what? And I think that every single true crime doc that came <clears throat> after the jinx, they that is like again, that's the blueprint. Everyone had tried to replicate what the jinx was. They it was the first docu series. No, you can't, but it was the first docu series where they had the, the opening titles were kind of cool and kind of made Robert Durst and like kind of look cool in a way. The music was cool and it just it Everyone tried to make their docu series like the Jinx, but it's if you haven't seen the Jinx, watch Excellent. it. It's on HBO. I want to rewatch the Jinx. I can rewatch it anytime. It's it's too good. The Jinx: The Life and Deaths of Robert Durst, 2015 HBO documentary miniseries about Excellent. New York real estate heir Robert Durst, a convicted murderer, and Andrew Jarecki directed the film starring Ryan Gosling called All Good Things, and that's how he got to start making this documentary because Robert Durst liked the movie and said, I'd love to sit down for an interview, sat down for an interview with him, gave him all the shit and ended up implicating himself and ended up like he solely went to prison and got caught because of things that he said that were captured on mic on the microphone. And, um, it is a wild fucking ride that, that docuseries hundred percent. How is the, the Ryan, Gosling, Ryan Gosling film? Oh, it's shit. It's, it's not, it's not a good movie, but it's all just a part of it. It's worth watching. And, and the jinx he is, talk about a fucking character, this guy, Robert Durst. Watch oh. that. If you haven't seen it, watch the jinx. It should be well, your that, number that one thing Well, that was on my list, too. That was yeah, on my that's... list, too. So now, so, we're top, so now we're top two over here. No, we're, we're, we're top one because that well, was going to be two. my top. You got two left. Wait, I have one. I did it. I, Night Stalker. We did The Staircase. I did Capturing the Freedmans. I did, I did um, The Seven Five. I did The Jinx. I did Making a Murderer. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's just the way we're oh. counting. Because um, you, you, you do one more. Because right, you did top two, but the Jinx was all, the Jinx was in my list too. So I'll okay. let you do again, and then and then we'll do number one. Okay, all right, fine. Let me do one more, and then we'll do number one. Because I think that you and I have the same number one. So let me go with my number two. Okay. Okay, my number two. Talk about this is if you haven't seen it, this might be the most this might be the most upsetting documentary I've ever seen where you will be sobbing. I think it's in a <laughs> lot of people's lists if you haven't seen it. It's called Dear Zachary. Oh. This is a documentary. This is one of the most heartbreaking documentaries I've ever seen in my life. It's uh it's called Dear Zachary, a letter to a son about his father, a two thousand eight American documentary Terrible. Um, about this guy who directed it, his close friend, Andrew Bagby, who was murdered after Andrew ended a relationship with an, a, a woman named Shirley Jane Turner. And it's he gets murdered by this woman that he tried to end things with, but it, there's way more to it that happens throughout the documentary. And it is, the documentary is for this, this man's son. And uh, I'm not gonna give anything away, but it is one of the most heartbreaking documentaries you will ever watch. And Very if you can stomach watch. it, watch it. Dear Zachary, um, definitely check that out. So that's uh, that's my top. That's my number two. And I think that you and I, for number one, I mean, listen, I, I think I think I think you and I are, are, are going to get the same number one. So I'm just going to I'm just going to take the floor here for please, a second, if you may. Please, if if the staircase is the the Godfather mm -hmm. of true crime documentaries the number one on our list is kind of like the good fellows of true, true true crime documentaries of sick fucks though this is a real not just true crime this is this is the number one of sick fuck documentaries out there yeah th th this has everything everything this has footage this has sick fucks this has good guys this has bad guys this yep. has, you know, incredible characters on both sides. It has surveillance footage. It has home footage. It is not for the meek. No. I think we we know what number one is. Number one uh, for me and number one for you is don't fuck, fuck with cats. With cats. This we is talked about it on the podcast before. Yep. Don't fuck with cats is a masterpiece of sick fuck documentary cinema it has twists it has turns it has footage it has characters it has um antagonists it has 
regular people doing irregular things. Yes. It has body moving. Shout out body is- moving, baby, because she is, man, how people need to be talking about her more still. Body moving is an alias a by this woman, this Vegas woman, casino dealer, who fucking single handedly found this piece of shit. It's called Don't Fuck With Cats, Hunting oh. an Internet Killer. It's an online manhunt. It's literally about an online manhunt. It's this sick fuck named Luca Magnata who is posting oh. himself torturing cats and different animals and <clears throat> nobody can find him. And he's, and he's starting to graduate to wanting to kill people. And it takes the internet by storm. And, and Body Movin, this is her alias, she is so upset, like everybody, she is so upset by the footage. And they show the footage. She's so upset by it that she takes matters into her own hands. And she's like, I'm going to find this motherfucker. I'm going to pinpoint where he is. I see there's uh, an outlet that looks maybe European in the background of one of these sick fuck videos that he's posting. And she'll zoom in and she'll find out who made the outlet. And and there's a a, a street lamp outside of his window. And she starts Google mapsing it. Like, they are like... We're going to find this piece of shit, and we're going it was to catch him. body moving and a couple of other people. That a couple were like, other people, but they, they, they beat they the just police. They dedicated their life to finding this sick fuck. And, and it is so satisfying when they do find this piece of shit, because you are watching this, and it is so fucking hard to watch. But this is a real sick fuck, and he posts disgusting <laughs> animal torture abuse online, and it really upset a lot of people. And, yeah. it, and images that you'll never get out of your head. But if you can stomach it, 2019, Netflix docuseries... Online manhunt, it has everything, and uh, it is film. a number one on both of ours. So that should say something. I don't know what else there is to say. Well, that's a part one. That's part one, and we could have easily gone on. Uh, I want to commend you on the deep dive of your list. You too, um, brother. Really well, thank excellent. You. I'll read off my list uh, in no particular order. We have "Don't Fuck with Cats," "The Night Stalker," "The Staircase." Capturing the Freedman, the Seven Five, the Jinx, Making a Murderer, Gypsy Rose, Dead and uh, Mommy Dead and Dearest. Um, we have Made in America, the O.J. Simpson, Thirty for Thirty masterpiece, and uh, Surviving R. Kelly. Uh, read your top ten list, uh, please. My, my top ten is is Don't Fuck with Cats, Dear Zachary, There's Something Wrong with Aunt Diane, The Cheshire Murders, The Jinx, The Staircase, The Night Stalker, I Sniper, American Murder. The Family Next Door, The Chris Watts Story, and Mommy Dead and Dearest. Excellent, excellent list. Um, we suggest you watch these films and, and just know that uh, when you watch them, these, these are not feel-good films. They are exactly uh, what we said they are. And what more can we do? We came, saw, we uh, disrupted came, saw, we, we brought the goods. Um, and uh, uh, glad you're back, glad you're feeling good, uh, gl- glad you're out on them streets, uh, uh, you know, uh, walking on two feet, uh, uh, young shooter. Everybody's happy thank, that you're, thank you're you, feeling bro. good. And, and DM us. Let us know what you guys think about these these docs or if you've seen it, if, if you've checked any of these new ones out and what you think. And hopefully we I'm can... I'm off of DM suspension, by the way, so that's Great. a big deal for everybody. Slide in there. I'd love to talk to everybody about it. Miles Jordan, a.k.a. the Bleach Brothers, a.k.a. the Dust Brothers. Take us out of here.